We've really been championing, champi championing the, the importance of drinking more water. But, but drinking water in its own right, it's so easy to tell people, hey, just swap out soda for water, swap out all these kinds of sugary things for water. It's so easy to say that, but when you're just drinking a regular old bland water all day, it can become kind of difficult. And that right there is why we have today's fantastic sponsor, Air Up, the first ever scent based water product out there that flavors your water with its special flavor pods entirely through the use of scent. See, Arup has these fancy little flavor pods right here. They come in a variety of flavors. Lemon, I, I, God, I got like 20 of them maybe. I had lemon, apple, lime, orange, tangerine, so on and so forth. There are a ton of flavors and all you gotta do is take this little flavor pod, give it a little bit of a lift, and next thing you know, the aroma, the scent of it will go ahead and flavor your water for you. Because as a lot of us know, when you eat food, taste is derived quite often from scent. It's why you can't taste anything when you're sick because your nose is all clogged up. And just like that, going from drinking regular water like this to flavored water like that. Skater, I need, I need sound effects, I need, I need beauty, I need power. It comes in a variety of different colored water bottles, a variety of different kinds of flavor pods. They're all unique and fun. And also, funny enough, I was in the call with the people who, who do the sponsorships and all that kind of stuff for Air Up, and they were like, hey, you should try sparkling water for it, you know? Like, it's a really cool option. It's a really good idea. So I did, and um, uh, when I was getting ready for this video, uh, this was full uh, originally, and, and I just, I kept drinking it, and... Side effects. It's really good. It really is a simple, effective way to get more water in your system, have it taste better, cut out sugary drinks, and everything in between. It's a great choice, and it's like, that's really kind of intelligent. It's a fun way. Use scent to flavor water. It's really smart, fun, and affordable. So go ahead and check out the description down below to get yourself your own Air Up bottle and flavor pods today using code BRICKY for 10%. Description, code BRICKY, get your own, it's down there good stuff now let's you and me talk about mechs big ones mecha souls kinda do not tell me you have played an armored core game before i know you haven't i know you you have well i don't believe you do you have a YouTube channel? Do you have an unhealthy obsession with fictional female characters with a lean towards heavily armored ones? Do you have a horribly annoying generic white boy haircut and beard? No? Then you're not me, Bricky. And I have played Armored Core. When I was a young lad, I liked big mechs and big mech games. One, I remember fondly, and it was called Mech Assault, and also Mech Assault 2, Lone Wolf on the original Xbox. I remember it specifically because like many games in that time frame, that, that, that era, when you idled on the main menu for long enough, it would play a game trailer of some kind. I remember vividly Star Wars Republic Commando did it, and Mech Assault 2 did it, and they had a Papa Roach singing Getting away with murder as the background music like a proto amv wild times now on the playstation 2 i picked up armored core 2 like really early on when i was about seven years old or so and i've also played armor core 2 another age armored core 3 and armor core 3 silent line and a little bit of armor core 4 but that's kind of when i fell off see armor core 3 was my main squeeze even if i don't really remember much about the game's campaign. See, the thing I cared the most about, by far, was the arena mode. Nothing was more fun than fighting the next AC and whatever build they had, often just stomping them into the dirt until I would run into one very specific AC that would completely stuff my ass and just took me days to beat them. And you know, saying this, I would like to shout out the real AC of Legends, Ace, piloting his AC named Arcadia. 
I couldn't beat Ace for genuine weeks. And when I did, it was a feeling that, that no orgasm could ever produce. Not like I would know. That was my Armored Core history. Build AC, paint AC, kill 10 ACs as if they were nothing, get stuck on 11th AC for a week, remake AC, customize new AC, finally kill enemy AC, it's summertime, turn up AC, rinse and repeat until the entire arena had been completed. So I may not have been extremely versed in the Armored Core multiverse, but I did play it a decent amount and I took pride in finally feeling like I could be cool and say, yeah, I'm an Armored Core fan. Then I, you know, took a step back and realized how stupid I sounded, bragging about my veterancy in a PS2 mecha game. But hey, it's all I had, so, so milk it I did until Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon came out and the internet collectively got filtered and completely misunderstood what an Armored Core game is. Armored Core is not a Souls-like and it is not a traditionally told style of game. Armored Core is ace combat with mechs. It kind of always has been with various degrees of quality. Now, because many people who have picked up Fires of Rubicon will have done so being big Dark Souls fans, I am going to compare this game to Souls titles a lot. Not because they share a ton in common, even if they occasionally do, but for ease of comparison with something most of you watching will probably understand. See, what makes Armored Core games stand out among other games and stand out even among Ace Combat games were for the three main reasons, which is setting, scale, and customization. Armored Core 6 takes place in the standard style of an Armored Core setting, which is dystopian corporate military. See, in Armored Core 6, morals never beat money. And you can make a statement on how that applies to the 21st century all you want. But this is more of a go bomb an orphanage and, and then you'll say just one, which gives us a really good coat of paint for the canvas that is our setting. This game takes place on Rubicon 3. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, I've been, I've been doing a lot of filming today. I, <coughs> I need to... I need some water. Oh, ho, ho, yes. Play the sound effect. Orange Aid. The game takes place on Rubicon 3, a planet in the distant future in which you have discovered coral, an energy source that is basically unlimited and defies the laws of thermodynamics, going as far as to combine flesh and machine. Insert children of the Omnisaya um, the theme right here, please. However, a massive apocalypse occurred known as the Fires of Ibis that demolished Rubicon 3, causing it to be uninhabitable for half a century, entirely because said coral ignited and exploded. That is what What's happening in that reveal trailer. Now, coral deposits are reappearing, and corporations are looking to get a, a good chunk of that shit. Hey, you are a pilot, specifically designed to use armored cores. You're also probably lobotomite, horribly disfigured, or some kind of other terrible physical fate. You are 621, and your job is to serve your mysterious handler known as Walter. Put your dick away, Walter. Uh, get yourself a mercenary license, and get yourself some work, and that work will make Make you money and that money gives you new parts these new parts let you kill more things to make more money then the cycle repeats until it gets uh, <laughs> a bit wacky as most from soft games tend to do this is where armored core setting really shines. You will accept an offer to straight up murder the resistance freedom fighters on Rubicon 3 and then right after that, without a second thought, take the contract from those same freedom fighters to kill the people who originally hired you. You are a hound for the highest bidder. Your purpose is money and corporations need someone to do their work. There is a very like matter of fact way the game goes about talking to you. Like, each mission is briefed in a simple audio call and each mission doesn't have an over the top ending sequence. It opens with main system activating combat mode and ends with a screen showing off how much money you made, which is why a lot of people didn't quite understand what they were getting into when they began Armored Core 6. The series has always been a bit niche, but this was the biggest mainstream appeal this game has ever received. The amount of people who have heard of Armored Core is vastly higher than the amount of people who knew from software made it. It's like if I told you that that old Warhammer Eternal Crusade game that fizzled out was made by Behavior Interactive, who made Dead by Daylight. 
Yeah, it's a true flex of marketing. That initial trailer for that game and those giant words from software appearing on the screen did wonders. But everyone knows from soft from their souls games. And so I think a lot of people expected Mecha Souls. This isn't Mecha Souls. This is Ace Combat or, or Project Wingman. This is one of those. You select the mission, hear a debrief, customize your platform for the mission parameters, play a fun 15 minute excursion, and then you come home. It also flexes its narrative muscles in a similar way. There are a few cutscenes in Armored Core, but there aren't like a ton of them. And so a lot of the development is done through its cast of characters and their debriefs, much like in those Ace Combat games, which kind of gives me an opening to discuss the Souls elements that have been taken. Now, as I mentioned before, I don't really remember much of the old AC campaigns, but this game definitely has some Souls-like attributes in the way its story is being told. While the main systems are more Ace Combat, like with the debriefs, you can really feel a lot of the narrative being pulled from their other titles. Like, for example, there is a solid amount of explanation done via things like combat logs. Information you, you scan and, and piecing stuff together. It's more direct, like, don't get me wrong, but if you want to truly understand the whole story, you will need to look for everything and go through those descriptions. The story the story is told in a very normal fashion, you know, you can piece together the general gist of what you're doing, what the coral is, what the major factions are fighting for, and what the ending is going to be. That's all fine. It's relatively simple, unlike a lot of the Souls games when it comes to narrative. But then understanding some of the minutia, like augmented humans, coral neural pathways, what Handler Walter's deal is, who the schizophrenic VTuber in your brain is, that's gonna need some deducing. They also do a very similar cutscene thing to the old Souls games, like if you notice, a lot of the times when you play play like a Souls game, there are cutscenes that are cool, but are maybe confusing as to why they're cutscenes. My, my mind immediately goes to the coffin teleports in Elden Ring. They're just, they're just kind of random. I always felt like those games just throw darts at the wall for what deserves a cutscene and what doesn't. Dark Souls 3 has Lorien and Lothric with this great opening cutscene, but then Yorm the Giant and, and the final boss, Soul of Cinder, have no cutscene. Just kind of weird. Armored Core is better with this. You have far more cutscenes near the end of the game, and they tend to be much more impactful from a narrative point of view, especially the last 25%. But then there are also other random parts, like when you launch yourself across the ocean in that giant cannon. It's cool, but it's, it's a little random. That actually isn't the worst explanation. It's cool, but a little random. Some are just fucking cool though. Like the part where the feds show up to collect your taxes. <laughs> Staying on the topic of Souls stuff, there are a few gameplay changes that go along with it. You have Estus now, like our little repair kit that before a giant boss fight are replenished, very bonfire-like. I'd also say that a lot of the boss fights have a quality to them reminiscent of the previous games. Two examples I can think of are the Ice Worm and Robot Melania. The Ice Worm fight feels like it was straight out of the Radon Festival, as it's like a pretty fun gimmick fight. And, and Robot Melania is just the, the slipperiest little bastard I've ever seen. It makes you want to reach into the goddamn screen strangle it by its throat like like stand still so i can drag these songbirds across your chin <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God I have this. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Arab. Play the sound. I normally don't have water with me when I film. I think I need to start doing this more often. I actually think of the things they took from their prior Souls games, they implemented it quite well. They took lessons, ideas, and things that worked in their previous titles and put it into one of their OG series to great success. Like everything I just mentioned is not a negative at all. It's just an observation. If anything, I think it improves the game in a way that makes it more accessible to general audiences without sacrificing its identity. The closest example I can think of is like Monster Hunter World. It was a game far more accessible to the newer generation of players, but it's still pretty clearly a Monster Hunter game. But like Armored Core maintains its identity very strongly, and it's simply improved upon by the lessons FromSoft have learned from over the years. Oh, and uh, speaking of strong identity, we need to talk about the game's art direction. Artistic integrity? Style? Yeah, style. This game oozes style. I can see it leaking out of its pores. There isn't a single aspect of this game that doesn't feel perfectly fleshed out. I harped on Elden Ring because I thought it suffered from being unfinished. Copy-paste dungeons, copy-paste bosses, just needed more time to cook. 
I don't have that feeling whatsoever with Armored Core 6. Every single part of it feels like it was feature complete and polished. The game runs like butter. I never got frame drops, stutters, not a single crash, nothing. The worst was when the enemy AI might go a little crazy here and there, but that was the absolute worst of it. It is a technical marvel that this game looks this good and has this level of scale and is completely bug, frame drop, stutter, bad optimization free. Each mission feels like the final spectacle mission, barring a few small side stuff. The environments are gorgeous, the visuals are incredible, and especially some of the bosses just ooze creativity. This is only compounded by the sound design of the game. It might be like a little difficult to truly appreciate the sound mixing here because of all the crazy stuff going on at once. But when you hear them all individually and really appreciate each bit of sound design, it's incredible. This isn't even gameplay too. It's the garage systems, it's the menus, the briefings. This game was made with a focused vision in mind, a very specific style. The UI shows it, the garage shows it, the arena duels show it. It's so hyper-focused on exactly what it wants to be. And if that wasn't enough already, you have the characters, which are some of my favorite FromSoft characters they have ever had, which is an additional feat, as they are, for the most part, just the voice, unless you ask most fan artists online. Their VA work is incredible across the board, and the longer you play the game, the more they grow on you. Why don't you start a sewing club together and stitch that damn mouth of yours shut? Gun 13, huh? I'll stick with 621. Don't let the red guns teach you bad manners. I've got your back, buddy. Hope you've got mine. 621. A friend of mine sent a request. Now, this one comes from me. I've got high level access now. Two more minutes and it's ours. I understand you want to join Operation Wall Climber. Know your place, you meager dog sitter. The answer is no. Time to do or die. Let's get our laughs while we can. You know how people will just go absolutely bonkers for characters in Souls games that have three lines of dialogue in total? You know, like Boba Fett syndrome after episode five? Well, that's the case for 90% of the cast of this game. Each of them could be their own Boba Fett. I mean, V4 Rusty is the huge fan favorite. Personally, G1 Michigan is a baller Giga Chad, and I mean that not with not even like an ounce of irony. He has some of the best lines in the whole game. Looks like my good for nothing's were good for something after all. Then you've got the underdog who's chatty. I love chatty. I don't know why, but he he's is he my beloved? That is all. Later. It's between him and Michigan. Chatty, my beloved, or Michigan, my beloved. I don't know, one, one of them. There is such a wealth of personality in this game. I know I've made a, a lot of comparisons in this video already, but I ask you just to grant me one more. In my, in my GTFO video, I discussed how unabashedly GTFO the game was. It was a game made for a very specific demographic and didn't try to seek mainstream appeal. Armored Core isn't trying to cast a wide net, but its style, its personality, its all in service to making it the best armored core game it can be. And I think in doing so, it's casted a bit more of a wider net just naturally. This game is doing very well on Steam. I fully expected it to actually arrive and then just kind of pitter patter out of existence because armored core is for a very niche type of person, but it's doing great. It's doing great. I'm shocked flabbergasted, dumbfounded, schmeckledorfed. It's awesome to see. Honestly, 
if there was a scene where I could really encapsulate all the greatness that came into Armored Core from the sound design, voice acting, the whole thing, it's probably this cutscene and, and a bit of the fight with the two PCA officers. Code 1 5. Target for termination site. Time to pay the piper. Looks like we've got high-ranking PCA officers. Sorry to keep you waiting. I've got your back, buddy. Hope you've got mine. Go double four. Send me what you've got on the target. Relaying system response. Corporate agent. Which is kind of crazy that it's seeing such mainstream appeal right now because I genuinely thought it was going to stay a really niche title because there's a lot of reasons why people would be turned off from this game. Not only because they expected a Souls game for one, uh, which is kind of their fault, but two, it's, it's pretty hard. I'm fucking dead. Like, not only is it generally difficult, but it's hard in a variety of ways. And it, it's difficult to determine because the game is really hard and really easy at the same time, but it's, it's for different reasons. Because when you, when you think of Souls like hard, you know, when you think of like a Dark Souls game, how hard it is, a lot of the difficulty, like 75% of the difficulty comes from reaction speed, timing, and, and how the game punishes you. You know, a lot of the most difficult encounters come from knowing when to dodge and failing that, meaning you lose a third of your health or sometimes more. Okay. That did almost all my HP. In Armored Core, not only do you need to have good reflexes when it comes to dodging, but the game has no iframes with its dodging, which is something that tripped me up constantly while playing it. So it's not just pressing the button at the right time, it's dodging a specific way to each enemy attack. But then there's the difficulty of dodging based on your mech. You know, a roll is a roll is a roll. Fat roll, medium roll, whatever, it's a roll. Quick boosting, is a roll. But what about quick boosting with tank legs or quad legs? How about jumping with reverse jointed legs, hovering with a tetrapod or the Joe Swanson special? Now it isn't reaction time only, it's reaction time, enemy attack registration and build simultaneously. This isn't even talking about the different boosters. Then you are tested on how you build your mech and how you can handle this gigantic screen of information that makes your brain explode. Might I remind you, this is a dumbed down version of previous Armored Core games. The older ones had more parts. Properly customizing your mech for your situation is a skill. Then using that mech with its various energy amounts, different weapons, boost speed, health amounts, and so on is another skill added on to the already huge amount of shit going on on screen that you need to dodge. So you need to be good at building your mech, then using their weapons, individual weapons, mind you, dodging, dodging with this particular mech, dodging with this particular booster, not relying on iframes, managing health and energy, managing lock on times and speed, managing weapon accuracy and optimization ranges, then get thrown into Baltius with 50 fucking missiles being fired at you and then being told good luck. And also you can't over level yourself to fight the enemies. That's one of the biggest things that separates this game. When I struggle with an Elden Ring boss for long enough, I can just go out, farm some runes or something to power level and try again. There is no over leveling the bosses in this game. This is all on you and all on your build and your skill as a pilot. And then after I finish writing this whole segment, I finish putting this whole thing into my script. FromSoft comes out with the patch that nerfs a bunch of the bosses, including Baltius and the Ibis fight, which really creates this weird discussion about difficulty. Like a lot of it, especially, revolves around customization of your mech and its parts. Customization was one of those, those pillars I mentioned earlier. And I actually think this game might have fewer parts than other Armored Core games. I don't have anything to back that up, but I, I think there's only like three reverse jointed legs. And I think the older games had far more than this, plus all the other parts. Though I, I am happy with the amount of weapons you have. That part's okay. Customizing your AC though, is a real test of skill in this game in more ways than one. When you load into the garage and say, I want to build a new mech, you theory craft what it's going to be. Do you want a flying missile boat? A close ranged melee monster? 
medium range gun craft are all explosives. Your options are at the start, virtually endless. Then as you start to put weapons on your AC, you'll start running into limitations. Are your legs too light for the weapon load you're giving it? Does your generator provide enough power for your equipment? Once you figure that all out and you don't have an EN shortfall and you're not too heavy, you can then test it out only to realize that you run out of energy way too fast or you stagger too quickly or your lock on speed is abysmal. So you bring it back to fine tune in a variety of ways, swap out your FCS, change the head, chest, the arms, get a new booster, maybe keep messing around with it until you finally get to the hard part, the drip. Now, you spend hours, days, sometimes customizing your colors, your weathering effects, your shine, making emblems, placing them, all the goddamn things you could ever want. And then finally, when you're all done and you go into a sortie and you say hello to some boss you are woefully unequipped for, you then need to change your build effective immediately. You walk that walk of shame right back to the garage, you put on double Zimmermans, you put on double Sun birds or stun needles and you go one shot that boss like the meta slave baby bitch that you are all right so he's a little quicker than i really expected him to be it's time for the cheese build chat i'm not gonna sugarcoat it oh my god this is actually so much better than i thought it was i knew it was gonna be good but i didn't think it was gonna be this good Wait. Okay. So like, like I knew it was gonna be good. Don't get me wrong. Like, like I'm, I'm. It's double Zimmerman. I knew it was gonna be good. I didn't think it was gonna be this good. I thought I would still struggle a little bit. Oh my god. Damn. I'm not gonna Damn. sugarcoat it. It's so upsetting. So saddening that one of the most customizable player opportunities in this game can be relegated to, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, double zimzam. It also means that this satisfying, challenging game can become completely trivialized because a few weapons are so horribly unbalanced. And <sighs> I, I have a hard time determining how much punishment equates to difficulty. Like in a Souls game, getting hit is a massive punishment and dying even more so. You know, getting hit brings a lot of stagger, sizable chunk of your health, if not outright killing you, and forces you to use an Estus, which in its own right is an animation that could have been used on attacking, it takes a while, you gotta get to safety, etc. Dying will also cause you to lose all your souls and do a run back, which is often an annoying and tedious process, yet also you can't change your build, at least not easily. You know, now, there are times where you can respec, but it normally takes a while and often has an expense attached to it. These things are really punishing, but does it make it a hard game? Where's the line between punishing and challenging? As I mentioned earlier, you know, all those reasons why Armored Core is such a tough game. The game though is not punishing in the least. Getting hit often doesn't mean staggering. It only staggers you if you get to a certain level of well, stagger meter. Repairing your mech is nearly instant, and you can rebuild your entire mech at the boss zone every time you die. And you can sell every single thing you bought back at full price. The game is phenomenally unpunishing, or whatever, the, is that a word? Is that a word? I don't know. But there's a double-edged sword to this. FromSoft games have never been strangers to easy mode options. You know, Elden Ring, Summoning, Spirit Ashes, Rivers of Blood, there have always been OP builds, but you normally couldn't just swap to it immediately. When the double Zimzams are right there, all you need to do is stick them on, and the pain in the ass boss is over. And it's really hard to just tell players, well, just don't do it then. When you have been slamming your head against the wall, against the boss for five, 10, 30 different tries, it is so much easier said than done to say, oh, just don't do it. Just keep using your current build. And that's not really what Armored Core is. The game is about trying new things. It's easy to say, just don't use Rivers of Blood. It's like, well, yeah, I don't have the weapon. It's not leveled up. I, I haven't built for this. I'm strength faith. Armored Core isn't that way. It's honestly why Baltius is the gatekeeper fight in this game. Is he the hardest boss? God, no. The Ibis series crushes him. But when you fight Baltius, you don't have all the overpowered meta weapons yet. Your arsenal is so much more limited. 
so you're going to struggle that much more. It's why I'm rather upset they nerfed a lot of the bosses in this game with their most recent patch, yet didn't touch the Zimzams, the Stun Needles, or any of the other major meta-breaking weapons. They mainly buffed the Assault Rifles, which in fairness were definitely underperforming, but I'd much rather it if they brought down the good stuff to keep the game's challenging difficulty instead of nerfing bosses and bringing everything else up. I play Destiny. I'm aware of the dangers of power creep. I'm aware of the problem where everything goes up instead of down. So to wrap up this particular tangent, the game is weirdly very hard and very easy at the same time. The way it's so unpunishing or whatever the word is again, it makes it so hard to stop people from just grabbing the easy mode tools and going to town. Restricting the player is, is part of making the game good. Every game restricts the player to a certain extent because that's how the game is supposed to be played. That's where the loop is from. Just how far they restrict them is dependent on the game. Here, the game restricts you none, which is fine but the guns are too good. You gotta nerf the guns. And it's a shame because I think they nailed a really good medium of difficulty, but they gotta, they gotta, they gotta bring some stuff down. So hopefully things will be tweaked in the future and rerunning missions as well as doing PVP has a, a bit more variety. Ooh. Oh yeah, you know, you know what time it is. No, I'm not even, I'm not even doing an intro on this one. Which reminds me, PvP. When it is not overrun with a double Zimzam, it's actually a much better time than I thought it would be. It's, it's a bit of a visually violent affair, but I'm shocked with how many builds have ended up being good. It's created this funny counter meta where people are teching into dealing with double Zimzam, but then people are teching into those people who are teching into them and it goes in circles. Plus in PvP, you get to see what abominations your opponents bring to the table. Whether it's an edgy emo mech or the most nightmarish vomit of colors you've ever seen. It's for them to decide. Oh my god in the arena. Oh my goodness the arena. How can I have this whole opening without talking about the arena? It's 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 pretty good. I actually like the fact that you can fight characters in the campaign. That part's pretty fun. But I have the same feelings towards the arena as I do to the rest of the game, which is it's fun but I wish it was harder. The arena especially. Getting stuck on an opponent was a great trial by fire in the older games, but because the weapons are so imbalanced, I don't think I lost to an arena pilot more than like once. Like genuinely, I curb stomped most to all of them. And that's just not as fun as it used to be. The fun part was actually unlocking the new OS chips to level up my AC, slowly getting those percentage increases to, to really hammer in a lot of my power. But that's about where it ended, outside of being able to fight story mode characters, that is. Which is fun. Armored Core 6 is in a weird spot. The games I enjoy the most are often also the games I have the most criticisms to add on top of it, because as the title of this video might have made clear, I think this is a genuine game of the year contender to the right kind of individual, to the right kind of player. This is their holy grail, their, their mecca, if you would. Right now, this is my game of the year. It's why the weapon balancing upsets me so much. When it hits that middle ground, that perfect middle ground of hard but satisfying, like nothing this year comes close. With the caveat, I haven't played Baldur's Gate 3 yet, so, so keep that in mind. But were you playing like a challenging mission, a strong boss with a build that you crafted yourself? It's pristine gaming. I think about playing Armored Core all the time. I think about build crafting. I think about weapon options. I think about customization. I think about G1 Michigan, my beloved. I think about Chatty, my beloved. I didn't expect FromSoft to grab me by the balls as hard as they did and squeeze until a mission's worth Earth of Coom or Coam came out, but God damn it, they did it. I genuinely hope this game gets continued support. Some weapon balancing to bring down the overpowered options and possibly some DLC content to bring in new weapons and especially new armor pieces would be incredible. I'd shell out money for an expansion pack that does both, preferably with some more arena options and main story missions. Actually, what would you think about like a survival mode? Three man survival mode, some kind of wave defense game mode, like when you defend those missile silos for Carla, just like constant waves of enemies, then bigger MTs, snipers, stealth boys, tetrapods, eventually ACs, and then boss waves. Every so often you get a health and ammo resupply. Come on, man. Fistfuls of coom, man. I just give so much money. I recommend Armor Core 6. 
wholeheartedly. I don't think it'll have the staying power in the mainstream like Souls games do, but I still think it's worth playing even if you aren't a diehard mecha person. It's an amazing game. It's my game of the year right now. Please put down the Zimmerman. And I really hope it stays like popular and it doesn't get relegated to just the mecha people like I thought it would. Woo, that was a video. Hot damn, that's a long one. I haven't done one like that in a long time. Um, hey, get yourself some air up. This this was great. I'm so happy I had these. This this is fantastic. I I never have water in here. I'm so glad I had it. I, this this is this is a whole new world for me. Uh, now I'm fully I'm fully in to the to the air up water drinking thing. It's gonna be on the future videos. I've always got it prepped. Oh, it's so good on the throat. Thanks for sponsoring this video. And uh, for all of you still watching, if you want to pick up some merch, this one right here, just a little siege. You're just doing a little siege, just a little siege. It's down in the, the description. I will link exactly that product so you don't got to search for it. It's right down there in the description. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big one. Oh, it's a big one. You have no idea. Toodles. Come on. Obviously, you're a skater.